now, you know how to find probability if you're picking one item, and you know you can find probability if you're picking more than one with combinations. But combinations won't solve every problem. So we have to have some more fun and exciting methods for how you find probabilities, particularly if you can't always do it with a combination. And the key thing is you've got to get down this set of rules here we're about to develop on how you know with, when to use which one. And this should help you keep it straight. When we were using combinations, I didn't spell this out, but there's some assumptions that were made when you were doing combinations. Yep. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, they didn't change the bill. So we're still here. Okay, when you were doing combination problems, when we were just picking those lottery numbers, or um, what other one would we just do? Picking, drawing cards. When we were doing any of that, were you picking them in any specific order? No. Did you have to pick those lottery numbers in a certain order? No, you did not. So combinations assume that there is no order involved, which makes sense. Because combinations, orders were things that were permutations. If you were putting things in order, you were doing permutations. So combinations would not have order. Consequently, if you do have a situation where they say, do this in a certain order, you're going to do what we call individual probabilities. And I'll get to how to do that in a second. But if it has order, then you're going to use individual probabilities. By the way, this is 5A and B on your assignment, on your journal. Okay. There's just a couple other things that you are assuming with combinations. When we pick the lottery numbers, after we pick the first one, were we putting it back in? Did you pick it again? When you pulled out, say you pulled out a 22 out of the lottery lit numbers, can you, do they put the 22 back in once it's pulled out? No. no. When you draw cards out of a deck of cards, were we taking one out and then putting it back in again? No. no. So combinations assume also that there's no replacement. You're not putting it back in once you take it out. If you do put it back in, then you're going to do an individual. And then the third thing, new terminology, ding, 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 ding. The third thing is it has to be what we call a dependent event. If I tell you today that you're leaving this room depends on your behavior, what does that mean when I say depends? You have to have done one thing. You have to, this has to have happened before that happened. Um, you are considered dependent of your parents. If you depend on them for your food, clothing, shelter, etc. Okay. In our case, if it's dependent, it depends on something. A dependent event when you took out, drew a card out of a deck of cards, does that affect your chances on what the second card is that you draw? Yeah. So what happens on the second one depends on what happens on the first one. If you take an ace out, that means on the second draw, there's less aces to pick from, less chances of getting an ace. So it's dependent if your chances change with each draw. So what would be supposed to be the opposite of a dependent event? Could it be an independent event? Okay, if it's an independent event, then once I draw something, I have to have the same. Okay. I have to have the same chance. Same chance every time an item is selected. Okay, can you name me something that would be independent where you have the same chances every time you do it? Like two more? 
Rolling a die, that's a good one. If I roll a three, does that have any effect? Same chance every time and I this was the an item. Sorry, I left that item. <laughs> an item is selected. <laughs> if I roll a three, does that have any impact on what I get the next time I roll the die? No. Totally unaffected. So that would be an independent event. Okay, if you draw an ace out of the deck, you put it back in and you draw again. Did my chances change? No. Nope. So it's still it's I have the same chance every time. So another way to do dependent events, the second event is influenced. It is influenced by the result of the first event. Whereas on independent, it's the exact same definition except it's the second event is not influenced. It's not influenced by the outcome of the first event. And I'm pretty sure that there's probably a general question about dependent and independent events in there somewhere, too. <laughs> so, now, there's one other stipulation that goes with this. On combinations, to do a combination, I need something in another color. All of these must be true. So you're doing combinations, all three of those have to be true. It has to be no order, no replacement, and dependent. Over here on individuals, if any one of those is true, you do it individual. It won't take you long. After you practice it a little bit, it comes pretty easy to check this. You go, if you see a problem, they tell you you have to pick in a certain order, you instantly go, oh, well, can't do combinations. If they tell you you're replacing it, can't do combinations. So, live and die by these rules. All oh, which one are you trying to read? All must be true. Over there, if any one of them is true, you you the individual. So, okay, let's go draw for some money. Come on, time. Oh, we're good. So imagine this is a jar that you cannot see into, and in this lovely jar, there are two one hundred dollar bills four $50 bills, and eight $20 bills. Okay. What was that? You want the jar? Eight $20 bills? Because I don't want to do have to work with gigantic numbers. <laughs> oh, 200, 200, 200. No, I was just making numbers of bills. <laughs> I was going, they aren't going to put very many hundred dollar bills in there because they don't want to give away lots of hundred dollar bills. <laughs> the smaller jet bills they're going to put lots more in because then they're not giving away as much. Because here's the rule. You get to draw three bills from the jar and keep them. <laughs> I am sorry, I'm not independently wealthy enough to have a jar like that in here for you to do. <laughs> well, we could just However, I will go buy some play money if you want to do it with play money. So, <laughs> uh, candy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Two person jars, uh,
Okay, I figure you all want to win the big buck, so we're going to figure the probability that we get the, the highest amount we could. Since they're letting you keep three bills, the best you could do would be get to be get the 200s and 150s. I want to figure the probability of that. Okay, what you now have to decide is, can I do it with combinations or not? Okay, so run your rules. Am I making you pick them in any order? Are you replacing them after you pick them? Nope, because you didn't keep them. Is it dependent? After I pull the first one out, does that change the chances when I pull the next one out? Yeah. So all three of those were true? We can combinate. Okay, so this is actually what you just did on your assignment. How many combinations will I need on top? How many combinations do I need on top? I'll need two because I'm picking two different things here. The bottom's always one. You're picking one grand total. Okay, so I need to pick the $200 bill. Because okay, there are two bills in there, and I need to pick two. Y'all buy that? 4C1? 50s. There are four 50s, and I'm going to try to pick one of them. Okay, what do I do between there? Hold on. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. What do I do? Multiply. And then bottom is always grand total. So how many total bills did you have? There are 14. And how many total did you pick? Three. And you get to press the number. Yes, this is really just like what you did yesterday. So that will, um, unsimplified, that will come out to be 4 over 364, but it actually reduces down to 1 over 91. So you have a 1 out of 91 chance of getting the 250 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but you do get money no matter what. So if you look at it that way, you, you got more than you started with. I'm wondering how much it costs for the lights. Yeah, yeah no, okay, now there's a the thing, yeah, I, you know, they said, oh, you have to pay $5. Did they say pay 5 bucks? This is a heck of a deal. Well, I mean, so you got them actually going to come out here with at least 60 bucks. So they have to make you pay at least 60 or more. <laughs> but there might be some wonderful philanthropist who, who enjoys giving away money. I saw five. Or you won some other drawing, some other challenge thing that, that, brought you that brought you into getting to do this. That could be. All right, we're using <laughs> same jar, same jar, new problem. This time, I want to find the probability that you will pick a $20 bill, then a hundred. And then another 20. What does that imply? Why did you say it's individual? I'm saying in order. You have to pick them in that order. If you have to pick them in a certain order, then combinations are out. And when I say individuals, I mean you're literally going to do a separate fraction for each one of these picks. It will just be separate fractions each time. You will still multiply. Technically, it's 20 and then another 100 and then another 100. It's still, when we talk about and being multiplied? Yeah. yeah. So this is still, it's not saying this or this or this. It's saying this and this and this. So it is multiplied. Okay. These are actually easy, but I always have people do these backwards. Remember, you're doing successes over total. Okay. If you're going to reach in there, you're drawing one bill. What's the chance that you get a 20 out of there? Isn't there eight ways to succeed in that jar yes. out of 14 bills? Okay, you just keep that 20. It's out. So now when you go to pick the 100, how many successes are in there? And what, yeah, now there's only 13 left, though, because you took it out. And then you need another 20. So why should you take that then? We already took 120 out up here, so now there's only 7 left out of 12. So on those types, your denominators are just going to keep dropping each with each. And then, and then, yeah, okay, this is normal algebra now. Since that's just multiplying fractions, you can cross cancel if you want. Yeah. 
In fact, I would look and go, hey, look, 2 times 7 is 14. Those are all gone. And then the 8 and 12. 8 and 12 would reduce 2, three. two and 3. So you would finally then have left two and three. 39. That's not bad. Okay, what if this problem had said find the odds of picking them in that order? Okay, remember, remember the big circle the other day with the cherries? What did it say about finding odds? I think I did it. Did I not do a circle for you all? Okay, study class. Okay, if you're if you're picking more than one item, when you want to find odds, what do you have to do? Find probability first. So we've already found we found probability. We just got two out of thirty-nine. How do you turn that into odds? Yeah. So it will become two out of. 37, because if there were 39 total ways to do it, that means there were 37 ways to fail. Because if this is successes over total, then there would be two ways to succeed over 37 ways to fail. So your odds still aren't looking so good. <laughs> Sorry. If you find your, this is the one problem I always have people do backwards. If you find yourself doing this on and you're working a problem, there should be a big warning that something's wrong. I'll have people who will go, oh, there's eight twenties in there. I need one out of the eight twenties, and then there's two hundred, so I need one of the two hundreds, and then they'll come tell me I need one out of the seven twenties that are left. If you have ones across the top all the way, you're wrong. <laughs> the chances that that happens is slim. Do not do that. These numbers you have on the bottom are what should have been on the top. And I always have people do that backwards. This is a major no-no. Don't do it. If I can find it. That's not what I want. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. That is a no-no. That will not work. Bad. Okay. Thank you. I am. <laughs>